use very much with me because at one point she tried to put a character into one of her movies who was named after a girl that I went to school with. And she was sort of admonished for that in, in, in such a way that, that her 12-year-old son kind of got through to her in a way that perhaps other people didn't always. You know, I mean, she, usually I think, you know, telling my mother what to do didn't quite work. But, but your 12-year-old your kid can be sort of effective if he says, you're going to ruin my life at school by... You know, so you were the one protected from from her pen. A little bit, yes. I mean, but but you know, there there were sort of, um, yeah. I, w I would say that I was the person that that got protected a little bit. Me and my brother. So and and certainly her last husband. Uh, right. Who who doesn't appear in 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 the yes, film? Yes. Yes. That that is true. He is he is one of two people who don't appear in it. You know, my stepfather and my mother had a really fantastic marriage and. And uh, unlike sort of the one that came before it, which was to my father, and, and she turned it into a kind of Romana Harper. play, you know, and, uh, and it then became a movie, um, which we'll talk about in a minute, I'm sure. But, but my stepfather was a sort of, uh, you know, he was sort of the end of her drama, and they had a really great love affair, and, and there was a lot of grief, and he didn't really feel like being on camera uh, crying about her, and... Uh, and that was understandable. I mean, I, di I didn't turn into Patty Davis doing this movie, you know, as the sort of son of whatever who's kind of spilling it all out. At, but, um, but it was complicated for everybody, you know? I mean, you, you decide, you know, somebody dies, everybody doesn't kind of go, oh, let's go do an interview. Let's, let's go be on camera about it, right? Capture my grief right now, please. Uh, I'm, I'm imagining that one of the reasons that you, you made this movie is because your mother was such an incredible figure. And it's not about just sort of sort of showcasing her legacy, but there are questions that you don't ask about a person while they're still alive, that you don't ask their friends. You don't go meet your mother's friends to talk about your mother when, when, when she's alive. Right. It would be an odd thing to do. But in death, you kind of can do these things and you can ask these questions. Was that where this came from? Were you just kind of curious what made your mother so curious and who she was? I think that that was a big part of it. And, and I knew when she died that I was going to want to write about her. She had written about her parents after they had died. And, and I think that if you're a writer, you know, at, at some point you have to, you, you do sort of have to use the experience, the, the significant emotional experiences you have or, or you're wasting them on, on some level. And so, uh, you know, and, and then also because her death had been sort of this secret when everything else had been public, I, I think I probably had some need to keep talking about her, and in some way, this provided a way to do that. Um, you know, I, I don't really believe in closure. I think closure is a very kind of American um, hallmark concept. I, I, and for me, the film was continuance. It was a, um, it was a way to kind of keep going with her, and, and I also knew, just, just to give you a really long-winded answer, that, that while I wanted to write about her, I knew that I wasn't gonna do a better book than any of the books she had written about herself, <laughs> right? So, so That is a lot of pressure. <laughs> so, so it was sort of, you know, I'd seen the Joan Rivers movie, I had seen Bill Cunningham, you, you had this kind of spate of fantastic cultural documentaries, and so then I kind of thought, well, what if we kind of used the archival of her and, 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 and I talked to her friends and the people that worked with her and you know, some of the people who wound up on the wrong side of things with her and, and, and sort of that became the movie. Now she is an in incredible, uh, I would say, zing artist. She can zing anybody that, that comes along and it's even said in the movie by some of her close friends that sometimes it felt like she valued words and language more than she valued their own friendship because she couldn't help a good zinger. You talked about being protected from her when it came to when it comes to write her writing, were you also protected from her sort of love of language over than love of maybe <laughs> uh... I don't think my mother humiliated me. You know? Um, and I think I don't necessarily and I think she, mean humiliated. Um, well I think she I think she occasionally humiliated other people. I think I think she was a little bit more sparing with me th than she was with other people, but she had very little patience for um, for self pity and, and you know having a, a discussion with my mother about a relationship that had gone wrong was was it was not quite what she was there for. I mean she was she was very good at sort of how can I solve a problem practically? Um, she was very loving in that regard, but um, 
but she would get a kind of quizzical look on her face if you sort of talk to her about, you know, your fears. But that's so interesting for someone who was so introspective about, about her own life. So much of her writing is, and is, is introspective in many right. ways. Yes, I think she was deeply introspective. I, I, think she, uh, I think she in certain ways probably regarded uh, f fear. I, I think there was probably a little bit of sexism about it. I, I don't know. I mean, uh, but, you know, Delia didn't really, you know, Delia, who was her sister and her closest collaborator, did not go to her for uh, emotional hand-holding. She was very good to her friends in service of a problem. That was sort of where she channeled it. So there's this thing that she says, you know, in the movie about how, about her own mother, about how warmth wasn't up her alley. And, and, and my mother was, was warm, but, but in a certain way. And not in a, you sort of, once you knew at a certain age that this other way wasn't going to come, you stuck to this way and learned to love that. Correct. Now, uh, gathering the group of people that you've gathered here to talk about your mother, uh, how, was that difficult at all? Or are people just want to, they want to talk about Nora? Uh, no, ev everyone didn't want to talk about it. And by, by the way, I mean, I think that if somebody wants to go and do an interview shortly after somebody dies, if they're really eager to do that. It's probably a pretty good indication that they're the person you don't want to interview, you know? I mean, you know, every so often somebody would sort of show up writing a, a tribute to her and you'd think, this person had lunch with her once, you know? Right. I mean, there, there was a, a fair amount of that. When well, she's that kind of figure being sort of such a New York figure as well. I mean, I feel like the New York being sort of the city of media, so often when someone dies, it's also the place where everybody feels the need to write a column or now a blog post. A blog post even worse because you need no one to sort of be like, I don't remember to you knowing it. this person or to edit it, you know, so everybody can come out of the woodwork and say, she was my hero, Yeah. you know? So when you looked to do these interviews, who did you look towards? Well, I looked towards the people who were closest to her. And, and also, you know, in addition to you know, the movies that I mentioned earlier, The Kid Stays in the Picture and Joan Rivers and Bill Cunningham, I mean, in addition to all of those kind of fantastic cultural docs, there were also a good number of kind of celebrity portraits where um, there were kind of empty platitudes from people who uh, who didn't really know the person. And, and sometimes they had kind of smart, they had a kind of smart analysis of why the person was important, but they almost always got a little bit picked apart by critics for being sort of unnecessary and, and because it seemed like sort of celebrity, you know, can we curse here or? Yeah, we can curse. It, it seemed, you know, like star fucking, you know? And, and so there was a moment where we thought about going to people like Amy Poehler and Tina Fey because certainly they, um, we'll talk about how much they loved her work. Well, and certainly I think they were influenced by her in some way, but I, but there's you something. Lena. Um, we did go to Lena, but Lena had a personal relationship with my mother, and in a real way. So, so, so that was kind of the, th that kind of became how we decided ultimately whether or not we were going to do an interview with somebody. Was that that they had to actually have a have a role in her life, you know? I mean, no, oh, sorry, go ahead. Even, even Reese Witherspoon, who does a, a reading of her text in the movie. I mean, the two of them had a, a you know, they had a project going together, and and Reese actually had, had gotten divorced at, at that point from, you know, from Ryan Felipe. And, and my mother did quite a lot of kind of trying to set Reese up with, you know, with guys and, and, and usually, usually a little older too. And, and, I, and I believe she did that with Nicole Kidman too in her kind of post Tom Cruise phase. She was, um, you know. She was trying to make the stars align basically.